And yes, friends, it is officially time for the Disney Kids video. You can be in it if you behave. Hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And while we have discussed many different Disney topics on this channel before, such as Disney princesses, Disney heroes, Disney couples, Disney movies, and even ventured into the parks with Disney parades, we have yet to discuss some of the most influential characters who actually represent the target audience for Disney. As today we are going to be going through Disney's animated movies and talking about all of the Disney kids characters. Guys, I am so excited for this video. This is one that I have been waiting to touch on for a long time and it's finally here. Oh, and also forgot to mention happy fall, happy spooky season. It is one of my favorite times of the year and I hope you're all getting in the pumpkin spice mood. And with that being said, Halloween is approaching fast and I have a lot of really fun and exciting content planned for the Halloween season. And while I have hinted in the past on my Instagram, Instagram as to what my Halloween costume is going to be this year at Nikki's Not So Scary Halloween Party, there is also a very special and secret hint in this video, so you're gonna have to see if you can find it. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Nikki Mara, and I am a self-proclaimed professional Disney adult. <laughs> I started creating content over on TikTok, but have moved on over to YouTube and have been loving doing long-form videos for you guys. So if you are a massive Disney fan, love to kick back and talk about all things Disney, then hit subscribe down below so that way we can be Disney besties. And if you're excited for today's ranking video, then make sure to hit the like button down below. And we gotta keep today's intro short because we have quite a list of Disney kids to get through today. So without further ado, let's jump into some brief disclaimers and conditions. But as always, if you would like to jump right into the ranking video, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. I don't speak for the brand or the company, and any and all opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions from these incredible Disney characters down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all your thoughts down below and advocate for your favorite Disney kid character. I can't wait to hear about all of your favorite Disney kids. And thirdly for our disclaimer, spoiler warning for all of the Disney movies that we are going to be talking about today. As a part of my ranking, we are going to be touching on the plot lines and how these Disney kid characters influence the plot. And so if you don't want to have a specific Disney plot line spoiled, then I highly recommend just skipping on up to the next number on today's list. But next we move on to the conditions for today's list. Today's list is going to consist of animated Disney characters. In order to be considered for today's list, these characters must be an animated kid character from a Disney animated movie. And while it is a requirement for these characters that they must come from a Disney animated movie, I am specifically breaking this rule for one character, and I think you guys are going to be okay with it. Now, in order to define kid in the Disney realm, I am using some very, very specific criteria. Many of you may know from my ranking Disney princesses videos that a lot of the princesses are actually teenagers, ranging from approximately the age of 14 to 21. And while technically in the law around the world, kids are considered under the age of 18, I did want to make today's list very specific to not include the Disney princesses, but rather very young kids that appear in Disney movies. And so for today's ranking and today's purpose, we are going to try to scale back the number of characters by decreasing the age gap to under the age of 13. I really wanted to have a list of just children from very, very young age to very early teen. And so today's list is going to consist of children characters who are approximately between the ages of one and 13 years old. Of course, this is all a guesstimate because a lot of Disney characters' ages specifically aren't mentioned, but we can assume their ages as by their animation style and the way that they act in their Disney movies. In addition, we are not going to be including characters who grow up during the plotline of their Disney movie. You might also know that a lot of Disney princesses, such as Moana or even Anna and Elsa, do appear in their Disney movie as a child at one point. However, by the end of their movie and through their plotline, we see a lot of them going through their storyline 
storyline as an older teenager. And so today I really want to stick to the characters that just remain children throughout the plotline of their movie. And thirdly, for the conditions, we are going to specifically be focusing on human characters today. And even though we're going to be touching on the human characters, it is important to note that I will be including characters that are transformed in their movie to either an animal or an object. Sorry for a brief spoiler warning. <laughs> but yes, as long as they appear in human form during their Disney movie and remain a child for the duration of their Disney movie, they will be included in today's list. And as one more condition for today's list, we are not going to be including any more than four Disney kid characters from a single Disney movie. There are some Disney movies that have a ton of kid characters, and I really wanted to be able to diversify today's list, so I kind of wanted to put a limit on how many we were going to take from each movie. But with all of that being said, with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start talking about some of Disney's most incredible Disney kid characters. Oh yes, and very quickly, I did want to run through the specific talking points we're going to hit with each individual character, so that way you know what information you can expect to find in each ranking number. First, we are going to be talking about each kid personality. What is their personality like? What character traits do they have? Next, we're going to be talking about the role that they play within their movie. Are they a main character? Are they a side character? Are they only a very brief appearance? And then thirdly, we'll be touching on their impact on the Walt Disney Company. I think all of these three topics put together are going to really give us a well-rounded look of each individual character. And so that way we can go into detail with each of these characters, I am going to be limiting today's list to my top 35 characters. As always, it is very difficult for me to talk on each individual character when I have to list so many. So you might remember my Disney Sidekicks video where I listed upwards of 80 characters. I had to go through them very, very quickly, and we didn't get to talk in great detail on a lot of them, but today I really wanted to go into each character, talk about their personality, and where you can find them in the Disney canon. And so I landed with 35, and... I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> so with that being said, sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's get into today's Disney Kid ranking list. And if you haven't already yet, grab some water, make sure to hydrate, it's very important. Very good. We are starting off today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 35, who is Myrtle Edmonds from Lilo and Stitch. Now Myrtle is an absolute pain. <laughs> Myrtle is very bratty, very annoying, and honestly serves as a nuisance in her movie. At the beginning of the movie, we see Lilo, the titular character of this movie, taking a hula class. And unfortunately, due to some negative exchange of words, her and Myrtle do end up in a quarrel in the middle of class. Myrtle is very mean-spirited, not very kind, and also, in plain English, just a troublemaker. Yeah. For that reason, she doesn't really have the biggest role within her Disney movie, and she more so serves as a plot device in order to show us what kind of character our leading character is. And for that reason, because she only appears in a few brief scenes during the movie, she doesn't have the biggest impact on the Walt Disney Company. You won't necessarily find anything specific in the Disney parks that relates to her. And not to be mean to a little kid character. But she's annoying. <laughs> Trust me, watch Lilo and Stitch again, and if you still disagree with me, then come back and let me know in the comments. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 34 on my list, who is Wilbur Robinson from Meet the Robinsons. Now, from many of my previous Disney ranking videos, you guys will know that I am not the biggest Meet the Robinsons fan, and a big reason why is that I just don't gravitate towards the main characters in the movie. I've talked about some of them before in my Ranking Disney Main Characters video, but Wilbur is just one of them that I just don't gravitate to, and whose personality I don't really enjoy. Sorry. Wilbur Robinson is a mysterious boy character who claims to be a time cop. He says he is from the future and wants to reclaim a time machine that is stolen from the bowler hat guy. He is a main character in his movie and the plot very much does center around him and the other main character who we will talk about very soon. <laughs> but as for the impact on the Walt Disney Company, this movie does not really go down in history as one of the most popular and therefore doesn't have a lot of park presence and really isn't used in Disney media. And so. Wilbur just falls a little bit short in terms of today's list. But not straying too far from the topic of Meet the Robinsons, next we're moving on up to number 33 on my list, who is Lewis Robinson. 
also from Meet the Robinsons. And the reason that Lewis ranks higher than the other two kids on this list today is that he has extreme intelligence for a 12-year-old boy. He is a little bit deeper than the other two, seeing as he does have good intentions in his movie, but he can also let his frustrations sort of take over and cloud up his brain a bit. As for the role in his movie, he is a main character in Meet the Robinsons, and so we actually get to follow him in this movie and spend a little bit of time with him. But again, much like our friend Wilbur, he doesn't really have the biggest impact when it comes to the Walt Disney Company, and that really happens to be because of the poorer performance of the 2000s movies. If you were to ask a random person on the street about Meet the Robinsons, they probably wouldn't be able to give you as good of a plot synopsis as some of the more iconic movies that are more well-known from the Walt Disney Company. And so yeah, our two Robinson friends are gonna fall on the lower end. But next we move on up to number 32 on my list, who I actually think is a more interesting character. At number 32 is Lampwick from the movie Pinocchio. Now Lampwick, much like Myrtle, is sort of a character that serves as an obstacle for our main character. As Pinocchio is on his journey throughout his movie, he ends up in Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island is this mystical place where kids can do whatever they want, which means that the misbehaving children often cause a lot of chaos and damage to Pleasure Island. And Lampwick happens to be one of these kids. We meet Lampwick on the coachman's coach, and we find out very quickly what kind of a kid he is. He is a troublemaker through and through, however, this does end up coming back to him as karma at the end, seeing as he is unfortunately turned into a donkey by the magic of Pleasure Island. As for the role he serves in his movie, he is a side character, but really only one that appears very briefly in the movie. I think the reason you might remember him a little bit more than other characters is specifically because of the scary imagery that is used to surround this character, but in terms of his impact on the Walt Disney Company, you can actually find him in a Disney attraction. As over in Disneyland in Anaheim, California on Pinocchio's Daring Journey, you can actually find Lampwick within the Pleasure Island scene, and it's the iconic scene where he is transformed into a donkey. Kind of a scary end, but I guess that does teach you to behave well as a child. But next we move on up to number 31 on my list who is Yuppie from The Emperor's New Groove. Now, we don't get a whole lot of personality from Yuppie because he is only a very little baby. He really only appears in one scene and we really don't get a lot of time with him at all, but he's very cute. He's one of the youngest characters on today's list, in fact. Despite not being super present in his movie, he is very cute and actually gives us a more positive energy out of the movie than any of the characters that we've talked about so far, in my opinion. But that being said, he doesn't have a lot to do with the plot and really doesn't have any sort of impact on the Walt Disney Company. I just think he's super cute. He's a really, really cute character that is sure to bring a smile to your face anytime you watch The Emperor's New Groove. But next we move on up to number 30 on my list, staying in some very similar energy, who is Jim Jr. from Lady and the Tramp. Now, while technically unnamed, we can assume that Jr. is named after his father, considering we find out that he is a boy and that he is a junior, meaning he would probably take his father's name. Jim Jr. is very cute. Although he doesn't appear on screen a ton in his original animated movie, you can see him at the very end and also often swaddled in some blankets. As for his impact on the movie, while it may not seem like it's a big impact, he is actually a part of the big climactic moment in Lady and the Tramp. Lady finds herself tied outside and unfortunately she sees this little rat character race into the house. And we find out that the rat is on its way up to the nursery. In that moment, Lady and the Tramp have to team up together in order to save Jim Jr. from the rat. And because they're able to do so, we see all of them together very happy at the very end of the movie. And while Lady and the Tramp does have some representation within the parks, we don't unfortunately see Jim Jr. considering he's just not enough of a main character to where we would include him in the Disney parks. But he is very cute and he's going to rank higher than anybody else so far. Next we move on up to number 29 on my list, who is Rancis Fluggerbutter from Wreck-It Ralph. Now Rancis is one of the Sugar Rush racers that we meet 
upon entering the Sugar Rush game. Rancis has this really cool character design. However, he, much like a lot of the other racers, is brainwashed by King Candy into being mean to Vanellope and treating her like she is a glitch. Regardless, I think Rancis's car and his character design are super cool. He's definitely not the most influential of all of the Sugar Rush racers, but I do like him and he does stand out amongst the crowd. He doesn't have the most to do in his movie and he's not the biggest impact on the Walt Disney Company. However, I do think there is potential to see him in the parks if there is ever a Wreck-It Ralph and more specifically Sugar Rush section of a Disney parade. Staying on the very similar topic at number 28 is Candlehead, also from Wreck-It Ralph. Candlehead is also a Sugar Rush racer that we meet when we enter the game. Candlehead has this really fun ability where she's able to set off cherry bombs as she is racing by all these cherries on the side and she can tilt her head, which has a little flame, and lights off the cherry bomb. Candlehead, much like Rancis, is brainwashed by King Candy in order to be mean to Vanellope and to not include her. But again, much like Rancis, she also does stand out amongst the crowd. Next, we move on up to number 27 on my list, and I promise after this one, we'll take a break from Sugar Rush Racers. At number 27 is Taffeta Mutton Fudge, also from Wreck-It Ralph. Now, Taffeta is actually the unofficial leader of the Sugar Rush Racers. We often see her stepping up and speaking up for all of the other racers, and she is also the racer that we learn from that all of the racers were brainwashed into forgetting Vanellope's true role in her game. Taffeta is very quick to apologize and to be kind, once that sort of spell is lifted off of all of them. She has a lot more character development than any of the other Sugar Rush racers, and so it feels like she plays a lot bigger role than a lot of the other racers in the plot of this movie. And as for seeing her at the end, I really do think she is a good character. However, for the majority of the film, only because she is so influenced by King Candy, we kind of see her as an obstacle for our main characters. And as for impact on the Walt Disney Company, she has actually appeared in Disney parades before as a walk around character. Very cool, and I really do like the entire gang of Sugar Rush Racers. However, I just had to pick out my top favorites for today's list. Next, we move on up to number 26 on my list, who is Tipo from The Emperor's New Groove. And while we're at it, let's talk about number 25, who is Chaka, also from The Emperor's New Groove. Now, these two kids are absolutely adorable. We learn very early on that they are the children of Pacha, who is one of our main characters in this movie. Now, Chaka and Tipo are very spirited kids, and they have a ton of energy. They're not heavily featured in their movie. However, they do create a lot more of an emotional depth to the character of Pacha, who is able to talk about them with Kuzco. They appear in a couple scenes and do have a relatively positive influence on audiences who are watching this movie. However, they definitely don't have a big enough impact in order to make it into the Walt Disney Parks. And so while they are super cute and have quite a good influence on their movie, they're definitely not some of the most iconic characters. Next, we move on up to number 24 on my list, who is Jenny Foxworth from the movie Oliver and Company. Now, Jenny is actually a very important part of this movie, seeing as she is a rich little girl who is able to adopt Oliver. Oliver, of course, mirroring Oliver Twist, is an orphaned cat who ends up finding love in the arms of Jenny. While she's not a character that we know for the entire plot of the movie, she is a very heavy positive influence and it's very sweet to get to see her show her love and care for Oliver. As for impact on the movie, it is brief but very positive. And unfortunately for her influence on the Disney company, because Oliver and Company wasn't one of the most well-performing movies, we don't typically get to see it in a lot of Disney parks. And so unfortunately, Jenny is not featured within any of the Disney parks. But next we move on up to number 23 on my list, who is Penny from The Rescuers. Now, Penny is a character that you can't help but feel bad for, especially when we consider her being captured by Madame Medusa. In the movie The Rescuers, we find out that Madame Medusa has kidnapped Penny in order to use her small stature to steal a jewel for her. Poor little Penny is so heavily mistreated throughout this movie that we can't help but latch on to her as an audience. And so while she does serve as a very strong emotional attachment for audience members in this movie, she unfortunately doesn't have the biggest influence on the Disney company, seeing as The Rescuers, which also wasn't one of the highest performing movies is not necessarily featured within the Disney parks. I do love her quite a bit and do feel for her in her journey, and it is always so heartwarming to see her rescued at the end of the movie. 
But next we move on up to number 22 on my list, who is Prince Ralphie from Princess and the Frog. Now you might be thinking to yourself, who is Prince Ralphie? I really don't remember this character. Well, while he's not technically named in the movie, at the very end we get to meet him, and he is the younger brother of Prince Naveen. Ralphie is very cute and very spirited, and also quite talented, not that you would know it from the movie, but we find that out in another way. Ralphie only appears in one scene during Princess and the Frog, and while he may not seem to have the biggest influence, he does come as a very cute punchline at the end of the movie with Charlotte LaBeouf, but we also do get to see him on a Disney attraction, as over in Tiana's Bayou Adventure in the final big celebration scene, we can actually see Ralphie playing the drums alongside a lot of the critters that Princess Tiana has gathered for her big celebration. So while we wouldn't know that Prince Ralphie is super talented from watching the movie, we do know that he is quite a good musician, as he appears alongside the band in Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Kind of a character that you wouldn't expect to have a big influence on the Disney company, but who appears in Disney World every single day. But next we move on up to number 21 on my list, who is Noi from Raya and the Last Dragon. Now little Noi is so unbelievably cute, we find out that she is a baby who unfortunately has been separated from her family. While she initially serves as an obstacle for our main characters, she does end up joining the Band of Misfits and helping Raya to save all of Kumandra. This little baby is so brave and actually has quite the skill when it comes to martial arts. <laughs> I love little Noi's backstory and I think she is is very important in terms of the story, as she also takes part in the final trusting moment where all of the characters must learn to trust Namari. While she has a pretty big influence on her movie, she hasn't had any park presence, as Raya and the Last Dragon has very little in the Disney parks as of right now. But here's hoping that we get to see little Noi in the future, either within a parade float or perhaps in a future attraction. But next we move on up to number 20 on my list who is Shanti from The Jungle Book. Now, Shanti is a character that we only see at the very end of the movie. She's only in one scene. But what is kind of cool about this character is that she really serves as the final push moment in order for our main character to make his final decision. Mowgli throughout this movie really struggles with whether or not he wants to remain in the jungle or to move on to the man village. And seeing Shanti and wondering what it's like to be friends with her and to be around other humans is that final pushing moment for him. Shanti sings a beautiful little song about fetching the water, and in all honesty, she serves as a very nice breath of fresh air for the ending of this movie, and really makes you see why Mowgli would want to explore being around other humans. I really do like Shanti, and while Disney sequels are not necessarily one of my favorite things in the world, she also does serve a very big role in The Jungle Book 2, and I love getting to see her character expanded upon. But I will say she doesn't have the biggest role in her movie, and therefore doesn't also have the biggest impact on the Walt Disney Company, seeing as she doesn't really appear in the parks. But next we'll move on up to number 19 on my list, who is Michael Darling from Peter Pan. Now, Michael Darling is one of three Darling children who ends up traveling to Neverland with Peter Pan. Michael Darling is very sweet and very cute. However, he's definitely not gonna rank any higher than this, and let's get into why. Now, Michael travels to Neverland and ends up taking part in a lot of shenanigans with the Lost Boys. After mere hours in Neverland, he mistakes his mother for Nana not remembering the difference between the two. <laughs> While he's very cute and does serve quite a big purpose in his movie, I don't feel as though he's necessarily a character that a lot of audience members will attach themselves to, although he does serve a greater purpose in making other characters feel more important in this movie. And as for the impact on the Walt Disney Company, you can in fact see Michael Darling in the Peter Pan's Flight attraction at both the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida, and also in the Disneyland Park over in Anaheim, California. And while you can see a lot of other Peter Pan characters as meet and greet characters, Michael is just a little too young to be meeting and greeting with guests. Next we move on up to number 18 on my list today, who is Hiro Hamada from Big Hero 6. Now Hiro serves a very specific purpose in his movie. He is the main character, however he sort of serves at one point as an anti-hero. We learn in this movie that his brother passes away, and so at a certain point he feels the need to avenge his brother, going against not only his group, but also Baymax, which is his brother's creation. 
Hiro sort of develops this temporary view of the world through almost one of a Disney villain, where he is very determined on getting revenge for his brother. Eventually, he is brought out of this need for revenge and is very heroic at the end of his movie, but it is a very different role that a kid character takes on in their movie. I really do like this character, and he serves quite a big purpose as the protagonist of this movie. And seeing as Big Hero 6 is relatively popular amongst the Disney community, he is also a meet and greet character alongside Baymax. So yeah, I really like this character, and definitely one of the most complex characters we've talked about so far on today's list. On a very similar note, we're moving on up to number 17 on my list, who is John Darling. Now John Darling much like Michael, travels to Neverland and goes on a bunch of journeys and adventures with other main characters in this movie. John is the middle child of the Darling family, and for some reason, upon arriving in Neverland, he is actually appointed the leader of all of the Lost Boys, even though he seemingly has never been to Neverland before and doesn't know the land, <laughs> but to the best of his abilities we see him leading the Lost Boys around the island. He is a much more forward-thinking character in this movie, although still not one of the emotional cores of this movie. While he does serve as a main character within the plot of his movie, he, much like his younger brother, is not old enough to be meeting and greeting guests within the parks. Although for his impact on the Walt Disney Company, you still are able to see him within the Peter Pan's Flight attraction in both domestic parks. But next we move on up to number 16 on my list, who is the character Penny from the movie Bolt. Now, Penny is a very sweet and cute character. I like her quite a bit. While we don't spend the most time with her in this movie, seeing as she's only at the beginning and the end of the movie, we do emotionally invest in her as an audience, seeing as the entire movie is about her dog. Penny is an actress on a big Hollywood film set, along with her dog, Bolt. Through some strange events in this movie, Bolt is lost and unfortunately has to find his way across America back to Penny. And so at the end of the movie when they are reunited, it is a very sweet and touching moment and ugh, Penny is a big part of the reason why. There is such an emotional investment from audiences. And while Bolt as a movie doesn't have the biggest impact on the Walt Disney Company, meaning you really can't find the movie's presence within the parks, I do really enjoy this character. And it's also important to note that she is actually voiced by Disney legend Miley Cyrus. Ugh. I just love this movie, and it's so sweet getting to see a young girl reunited with her dog. But with that, we've reached number 15 on today's list. At number 15 is Arthur from The Sword in the Stone. Now, I really like the character of Arthur, and I really enjoy talking about this character in terms of the creation of this movie. Arthur is the main character of this movie, and we see him from a very young state, where he is a servant in the palace, all the way up to the point where he is named the King of England. Now, Arthur in this movie has to learn a lot from the wizard Merlin, and also has quite a few life experiences that end up preparing him to be king. Now, what's interesting about this character is that you might feel a slight disconnect throughout the movie. And the reason for this is he actually had three voice actors throughout the span of this movie's creation. And so it's a little jarring to hear his voice change from scene to scene and also within the same scene. But overall, I really do like this character. I think he has a relatively good arc. And even though Sword in the Stone isn't one of the most popular Disney movies, Arthur was able to be seen over in Disneyland Park during the Magic Happens Parade, which is honestly so cool and one of his first appearances ever in a Disney park. Yes, I really like this character and definitely feel confident giving him a place in the top 15. But next we move on up to number 14 on my list who is Cody from The Rescuers Down Under. Now, Cody is a great character. He takes the place of Penny in The Rescuers sequel. We learn that Cody is very passionate and cares so much about keeping the wildlife of Australia safe. Unfortunately, in trying to keep them safe, he is captured by Percival McLeach. That being said, we do get to spend quite a bit of time with him in this movie, and so we really get to see his entire character and personality shine through. And as always, it is very sweet to see him rescued by Bernard and Miss Bianca at the end of the movie. While he does have quite a big impact on his movie, not the biggest on the Walt Disney Company, again considering the Rescuers franchise is not the most heavily featured within the Disney parks. But I really do love the character of Cody, and he definitely ranks well above every other Disney kid character on today's list. But with that, we've reached number 13 on today's list. 
who is Christopher Robin from Winnie the Pooh. Now Christopher Robin is a great character and while he doesn't have the most screen time in his movie, I really do think his purpose is integral to the plotline. Christopher Robin is a young boy who has a lot of plush animals. Through his incredible imagination, he is able to travel to the Hundred Acre Wood and have all of his friends come to life. Christopher Robin is very sweet and very caring about all of his friends. And while he doesn't have the most distinct personality, I do think overall that he does have a very big and positive influence on his movie. And as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company, while he's not a regular meet and greet character, he has previously appeared within Disney parades. Although I will say his appearance is very, very rare, but still always good to see him. Next, we move on up to number 12 on my list who is Antonio Madrigal from Encanto. Now, I love Antonio Madrigal. I think he is so incredibly sweet and cute. And he has also appeared in my magic wielding characters video, considering he has a very special gift, which we find out is that he is able to talk to animals. I love this character's presence in his movie. And although he doesn't have the biggest impact on his movie or the Walt Disney Company as of right now, I do think he is going to be very integral to the brand new Encanto ride that is coming to the Animal Kingdom. Considering Encanto doesn't have the biggest connection with animals, and its main outlet to animals in its movie is through Antonio's gift. And it is very heavily rumored and discussed as of right now that the entire attraction is actually going to be based around the day that Antonio gets his gift. So while he doesn't have the biggest impact right now, I am so excited for his future impact on the Walt Disney Company within the Animal Kingdom Park. Up next on my list is number 11, who is Chip from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, how I love this adorable little chipped teacup. He is so incredibly cute. Chip is one of the side characters in this movie, and although animators didn't originally intend to have him as a main character in this movie, he eventually ended up with more and more dialogue after they heard the voice actor for Chip and wanted to include him more in the movie. Chip is so sweet and so cute, and while he does spend the majority of the movie as a teacup, he eventually is transformed into a little boy at the end of the movie when the curse on the castle is broken. I absolutely love him, and Chip does in fact have quite a big impact on the Walt Disney Company, seeing as you can see him every single day in Beauty and the Beast live on stage over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Oh, he's so cute. I just love this little teacup. <laughs> But with that, friends, we have reached my top 10 of favorite Disney kid characters. If you have any guesses as to who is going to make it into the top 10 of today's list, make sure to leave it down in the comments. I'm excited to see if you can guess who's gonna make it. But with that, we're starting off the top 10 at number 10 on my list, who is Mowgli from The Jungle Book. Now, I love this character. I think Mowgli is very influential to the entire plot of this movie. We see Mowgli floating down the river as a very young child at the beginning of this movie. He is rescued by Bagheera and brought to the wolves to be raised. And eventually, when he is a little bit older, it is heavily debated amongst the animal characters whether or not he truly belongs in the jungle or whether or not he should be brought to the man village. Mowgli does serve a very big purpose in his movie, seeing as he is one of the main characters. However, even though he is a main character in this movie, he does not get a lot of park representation considering he is a very young child and it would be quite difficult to bring him into a character appearance or a meet and greet. I definitely think it's possible that we could see him in the future either as a part of a Jungle Book float or even if it is eventually decided that the Jungle Book is going to become a ride. But besides that, I don't see this character really being super influential in the Disney parks. But regardless, I really love him and I think he is a great main character in his Disney movie. Next, we move on up to number nine on my list, who is Princess Ailanwi from The Black Cauldron. Now, while you may have heard me talk about Princess Ailanwi previously in my Ranking Disney Heroines video, I really do think she serves such a great purpose in her movie. If you have seen my videos before, you all know I am a big fan of the Black Cauldron movie, and it is such a black sheep movie amongst the Disney community, and I feel like so few people know about it. Princess Ailanwi is a princess, and she is captured by the Horned King in her movie. Eventually, she is freed and becomes a very integral part of the main trio of this movie who ends up freeing the land and defeating the Horned King. Princess Ailanwi is a main character in her story and pretty much follows along with all of the other main characters, 
Although unfortunately, The Black Cauldron is not one of the most heavily appreciated Disney movies, and so it really doesn't get a lot of park appearances, which means we unfortunately have not yet seen Princess Ailanwi within a Disney park. But here is hoping that one day in the future, maybe, that we will hopefully get to see this movie break into the Disney parks. Because it is so good and its villain is so iconic. Oh my god, what if it ends up in the new villains area? Oh my god, please, please let this happen. But really though, how cool would it be if the Black Cauldron is finally able to make it into the Disney parks with some sort of debut with Villains Land? I think that could be so cool considering it's a scary Disney movie and that's kind of the reason it hasn't been featured yet, but what if they play into that for the new land? <gasps> oh my god, please let it happen. <laughs> So yes, we haven't seen a lot of park representation for this movie yet, but keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number eight on my list, who is Vanellope Von Schweetz from the movie Wreck-It Ralph and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now, Vanellope is a main character within her movie, and she is the outcast of Sugar Rush. While we find out at the end of the movie that in her original programming, she was the princess of Sugar Rush, her programming was unfortunately messed with by King Candy, which left her as an outcast cast glitch. Because she appears to be a glitch, a lot of the other characters are very mean to her and don't treat her kindly. However, through the plot of her movie, she is able to show her true worth and make very good friends with Ralph along the way. I really do love this character. I think she is very sweet, very cute, and I absolutely love the scene that she gets in the sequel with the Disney princesses. And as for impact on the Walt Disney Company, she has appeared multiple times in Disney parades and it is always such a joy to get to see her. I love this character. I think her character design is so cute with all of the candy in her hair, and I cannot wait to see what future representation she gets within the Disney parks. Now, before we get into number seven, do you remember when I said we are going to briefly break the rule that these characters must come from a Disney animated movie? Well, here we go. At number seven on today's list is Sophia the First from the animated series Sophia the First. I love Sophia. I think she is so deserving of a top 10 placement on today's list. Sophia was brought to the Disney company through the Disney Junior TV series, and I think she is such a wonderful role model for young kids. From her TV series, we learn that Sophia was a young girl living in her village and she happened to become a princess overnight. Her series often gives her a lot of different plot points in order to show her character growth, and I think it is so cool that not only did we get to see her go through all of this character development, but she also gets to interact with all of the Disney princesses in some way, shape, or form. She often finds herself in situations where she could use some help, where she relies on her amulet, which will call forth a Disney princess. It's from this character that we also got the spin-off series of Elena of Avalor. While a lot of people may not know of Sophia the First because she doesn't come from an animated movie, I really do think she is such a special character in the Disney canon, and you are able to meet her as a meet and greet character over in the Disney Junior areas of Disney parks. I love this character, I love her storyline, and I think she is absolutely deserving of a top 10 placement on today's list. Next, we move on up to number six on my list, who is Lilo from the movie Lilo and Stitch. Now Lilo is one of the two main characters in her movie, and we find out that she is a very spirited young girl. One day when she is wanting to adopt a dog, she finds Stitch, who is an alien who has landed on planet Earth, and the two of them get into so many shenanigans throughout this movie. But what I think is so great about the character of Lilo is that she acts so much older than she actually is, and the reason for that is because of what happened with her parents. Unfortunately, she is now raised by her older sister, and so she actually has a lot more cynical view of the world than a lot of other Disney characters. But she is also able to make light of a lot of situations, and I think she is very inspirational for that reason. Now, while she is a main character in her movie, she doesn't often appear as a meet and greet character, although she has previously. So here's hoping that she reappears in the future as a Disney meet and greet character or parade character. But with that, we have reached the top five of my list today. At number five, is Tarin, also from The Black Cauldron. Now, Tarin is the main character in The Black Cauldron, and he is called upon a quest. We find out that the Horned King is taking over the kingdom and threatening it with 
finding the Black Cauldron. Tarin is placed in charge of watching over Henwen, a pig who is able to predict the future. When the Horned King is able to get a hold of Henwen, Tarin must travel to the Horned King's castle in order to rescue the pig, and also to defeat the Horned King in order to save the kingdom. I think this character is so wonderful and has such a strong arc throughout his movie. Again, because this movie is so forgotten within the Disney canon, he's not heavily present within the Disney parks. But again, here's me speaking into existence that hopefully one day he will get the park recognition that he so deserves, along with every other character in this movie. <laughs> but next we move on up to number four four on my list, who is the character Pinocchio from the movie Pinocchio. I love this character so much. Pinocchio is such a wonderful character that we get to see grow significantly throughout the plot of his movie. Now at the very beginning of his movie, Pinocchio is a wooden puppet that is created by Geppetto. He is given life by the Blue Fairy and it is very evident to see that he is extremely naive. Throughout his movie, he is often manipulated by a lot of other more villainous characters. Eventually, he is able to prove himself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and earns the honor of becoming a real boy. And thank goodness that he does, because now we get to include him on today's list. <laughs> Pinocchio is the main character in his movie, and therefore we get to spend quite a bit of time with him in his movie. We really get to the point where we feel for this character and root for him to get all of his dreams. And and while I absolutely love this character because of this movie, it is also very sweet to see him heavily represented within the Disney parks. As in the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida, you can see him not only in the Festival of Fantasy Parade in the final segment, but he also has his own restaurant with Pinocchio's Village House. And over in Anaheim, California in Disneyland, he has his own ride, which is Pinocchio's Daring Journey. It is so nice to get to see this character so heavily featured. I love Pinocchio so much, and he is so deserving of one of the top spots on today's list. Next, we move on up to number three on my list. At number three, is Alice from the movie Alice in Wonderland. Oh, how I love this character. Alice's wants and goals in this movie are so simple, but so impactful in creating the shape of this movie. Alice is very curious, and while she doesn't really care about the practical or impractical, she is always looking to expand her knowledge. For the first three quarters of this movie, her goal is to find out where the white rabbit is going and what he's going to do, and what he's late for. Eventually, she finds herself very deep in Wonderland, which honestly frightens her quite a bit. When she realizes that she no pun intended, has fallen quite deep down the rabbit hole, she decides that it is time to go home and to find her way out of Wonderland. And so for the last 15 to 20 minutes of the plot, she is simply trying to escape Wonderland. This movie is so wacky and zany throughout, but we as an audience latch ourselves onto Alice and hope that she is able to find her way back home through the end of the movie. And while she is the main character in her movie, she also gets heavy park representation in the Disney parks, seeing as she is a meet and greet character over in Epcot Park. She is in the Festival of Fantasy Parade in the Magic Kingdom. There are multiple attractions in her name, not only the Mad Tea Party, but also Alice in Wonderland Ride over in California. And even in the overseas park, she gets her own labyrinth, which I think is such a cool addition to Disney parks. But with that, we've reached number two on my list. At number two is Peter Pan from the movie Peter Pan. Now, Peter is a young boy who is mischievous and adventurous, and he is never going to grow up. Peter is such a spirited character. I think so many people remember him for his outspokenness and his ability to find adventure in anything he does. Peter, of course, is the main character in his movie, and he serves as the outlet for the darling children to travel to Neverland. He is always getting into shenanigans and causing mischief, which I think is very sweet and endearing for the character. But I also think it's important to point out that he is quite mischievous and can get some characters into some trouble. But regardless, he has easily cemented himself as one of the most iconic Disney characters, seeing as he has his own ride, Peter Pan's Flight, and he also is a meet and greet character and parade character in both Walt Disney World and Disneyland. There is no denying how absolutely iconic Peter is, and he absolutely deserves a top placement in today's list. But with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list of favorite Disney kids. Have you possibly guessed who it could be? Yes, at number one on my list, is Wendy Darling from the movie Peter Pan. Now, while your initial reaction might be, why is she not number two and Peter Pan is number one, 
I actually think Wendy serves a wonderful purpose and a very important lesson in this movie. At the beginning of this movie, we see Wendy struggling with being on the cusp of growing up. She often has to take care of her younger brothers and is expected to be more forward-thinking, practical, and grown up. She expresses that she doesn't want to grow up. She wants to stay in this childlike wonder where she is still able to believe in Peter Pan and to tell his stories to her younger brothers. Well, she goes on this journey with her younger brothers and is able to experience all of the magic. And I think it's important to note that it is so special and impactful that she is a more mature Disney child character. And for me personally, she definitely ranks at number one on this list, specifically because of the plot point of her not wanting to grow up. I know that personally, when I was on that cusp of age, right where Wendy was, I definitely didn't want to grow up and I wanted to stay in the childlike wonder. And I think if anything, Wendy was a very big inspiration for me at that point in life. And she was a character that really showed me that you don't have to grow up, that you can still choose to believe every single day. And so for me personally, Wendy is number one on my list of favorite Disney kid characters. Whew. And with that friends, we have talked about some of my favorite Disney kid characters. I hope you enjoyed today's list in today's video. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on any future magic from me. And if you happen to find my little hint towards my Halloween costume, make sure to leave it down in the comments. I'm excited to see if you guys figured it out. If you guys would like to see even more magic from me, I'm going to leave a playlist linked up above to all of my Disney ranking videos so you can discover all of my Disney favorites. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's, and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. As always, thank you so much for all the love and support on these videos. I am so glad that you guys have been loving the content coming out on YouTube. And believe me when I say we are not slowing down anytime soon and you can expect long form videos from me every single Friday at 5 p.m. As always friends, stay magical. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, I'll see you all real soon.